for a bailout in Washington. That weekend, a now familiar sight. Lehman's books opened up to their competitors. Now, Dick Fold was desperate to do a deal. On that last weekend, they really did think they had a deal lined up with either Bank of America or Barclays. But neither Bank of America nor Barclays were willing to do the deal without the same kind of government uh, guarantees that Bear Stearns got. And this time, unfortunately for Lehman, unfortunately for Mr. Fold, this time the government said no. Moral hazard trumped systemic risk. The government would not intervene. There were no options left. Bankruptcy was now a certainty. Good afternoon, everyone, and I hope you all had an enjoyable weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the Fed and the Treasury thought that Lehman could go under without causing a major conflagration. It would be a big event, but it wouldn't cause a cataclysm. But the American people can remain confident in the soundness and the resilience of our financial system. Thank you very much. As soon as he left this room, Paulson would be told the markets were crashing. Lehman Brothers had been far more interconnected than Paulson believed. Systemic risk became a reality. No bank wants to lend to any other bank because they're afraid that the other bank won't be able to pay them back. Even though this interbank lending is at the very, very heart of the banking system, of the worldwide banking system. Banks stopped lending. The credit markets froze. We're no longer just talking about mortgages. We're talking about car loads, loans to small businesses, commercial paper borrowing by large banks. <laughs> commercial banks are now infected. This is like a disease spread. <laughs> Come on. There's nobody able to get a loan, these short-term loans. No, the safest companies in the world, the most rock-solid banks in the world, unable to borrow money. Everything freezes. And that's what caused the crisis. And it really started because Lehman Brothers went into bankruptcy. No one forecasted that this was going to happen, but it turns out that this one decision made all the difference. Investors were shaken by Lehman's bankruptcy. The meltdown was happening. Commerce in America was grinding to a halt. I'm sure that Paulson is sitting there, and he doesn't strike me as the most reflective guy necessarily, but he must have been sitting there and like sitting there saying, my God, we may be presiding over the Second Great Depression. This is the utter nightmare of when you're not a policymaker. You're sitting there and you may have just made the decision that destroyed the world. Absolutely terrifying moment. With the credit markets frozen, there was soon a new big company at risk. The world's largest insurance company, AIG, had invested tens of billions of their insurance profits in risky investments tied to the housing market. AIG has problems that make everybody else's problems look like child's play. AIG does not have the money in the bank to support the commitments it made. They face the hammer of a credit rating agency downgrade, which would force them to go with. AIG had sold hundreds of billions of dollars of unregulated credit default swaps. Insurance policies based on the bet that companies like Lehman Brothers would never go bankrupt. Now the unthinkable had happened. Lehman was bankrupt. When Lehman goes bankrupt, all of a sudden AIG says, we're sitting on this huge deficit. We just promised to pay all these people millions and millions of dollars if Lehman went bankrupt, assuming that Lehman could never possibly go bankrupt, and now Lehman has gone bankrupt. AIG desperately needed cash, but now the credit markets were frozen. No one was lending money. Paulson and Bernanke were their only hope. AIG was the biggest insurance company in the country. It had sold trillions of dollars worth of credit default swaps. It did business with every big bank and institution in the world, basically. For there to be such a global, precipitous failure of an organization like AIG, I think, would have been very, very disruptive. Mm -hmm. I think everybody realized that. They swallow hard and they do what they have to do. 
And so much for moral hazard, right? So much for moral hazard. Because you can't let AIG fail. They had to throw their principles out the door and save the economy. And whatever criticism there would be of government intervention was a small price to pay for the deluge that would have occurred if AIG had collapsed. Key members of Congress, many of whom still knew few specifics, were called. Paulson and Bernanke asked us to meet with them and said, we're giving them $85 billion. I said to Bernanke, you have $85 billion. He said, I got $800 billion. Bernanke lent AIG $85 billion. The United States government now controlled the world's largest insurance company. We have effectively a full nationalization. So the government taking an 80% ownership stake in AIG. As the system crumbled, and one firm after another faced uncertainty, a strong feeling began to sweep over Wall Street. Maybe the government, maybe Paulson and Bernanke, had lost control of the situation. There's no sense that there isn't an overarching plan. And that, I think, contributed to a sense that, that there wasn't someone in control and that the government was reacting instead of acting. And that was damaging to confidence. 